Welcome to New City Church Online for this week's broadcast. We're excited that you're joining us, whether this is your first time or you're a regular member of New City Church. We bring greeting to you, and as always, we are praying and believing that this message today is exactly what the Lord wants you to hear, that you would be encouraged, that you would also be challenged, but that most of all, we would let God's Word change our hearts to become more like Him. And so today we're actually starting a new kind of three-week series before we jump into our Christmas series, which we're excited for the Christmas season, a lot going on at our church for Christmas this year. But we wanted to take some time to talk about this idea just for a few weeks of the idea of more than enough, more than enough. And in this series, we're going to take some time to talk about and explore the truth that Jesus is actually more than enough. He's more than enough for you. He's more than enough for me now. If you've been around church for a long time, you've probably even heard songs about this, and and maybe deep down you do believe it, that he is more than enough. But for you in this series, I want to ask you, are you living your life in such a way that Jesus truly is more than enough for you? But maybe you're new to church. Maybe you're new to faith. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing a gospel presentation or somebody preaching from the Bible. This idea that Jesus is more than enough might seem a bit strange or foreign to you, but in all honesty, here's what I want you to see. This is what Jesus wants to offer for everyone, that if we choose to follow him and live our lives according to his teachings and his commands, the life we get in return is more than enough. And so this is a series where we will explore what this looks like, what it means for us, So just to give you an idea of where we're headed today, we're talking about when Jesus is more than enough, we can live our lives satisfied. Next time, when Jesus is more than enough for us, we can live our lives feeling supplied. But also when Jesus is more than enough, we can experience the supernatural through the power of his Holy Spirit. So today, here's what I want us to understand. When Jesus is more than enough, we live our lives satisfied satisfied i mean isn't that what we want in life all of us think about don't we live our lives not always chasing or don't we we probably don't want to live our lives chasing the next thing in order to feel some sort of satisfaction most of the time it's temporary i mean just think of all the time and the energy and the money that we spend to feel some sort of satisfaction Most of the time, I I would guarantee you have felt this most of the time and and all that energy and time and money that you spend, you most of the time, you probably get buyer's remorse or or you feel like you've wasted so much to just get so little. See, this type of satisfaction that Jesus offers, it lasts, but the type of satisfaction that we try to get on our own, it, it doesn't last. And once we realize that it doesn't give us what we need, we grow tired and weary and frustrated. And we've all been there. But today there's good news. Because when Jesus is more than enough, there is satisfaction that can be found that's not temporary. We won't leave weary. We won't leave tired. We won't leave frustrated. Now, I know it sounds too good to be true, but this can be found in Jesus. And we know this is true because Jesus talks about it more than just one time. At the beginning of his public ministry in the early part of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus kind of starts his public sermon. We know it as the Sermon on the Mount, but he starts it with almost like a poem called the Beatitudes. And here's what Jesus says about being satisfied. In the New International Version, Matthew 5, 6 says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The Passion Translation puts it this way, How enriched you are when you crave righteousness, for you will be satisfied. I mean, what's Jesus saying? He's saying blessed or happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they found what they were looking for. They are satisfied. Now, we can all agree the whole world is seeking for this kind of happiness, this kind of satisfaction. There's no question about it. Everybody wants satisfaction. I mean, this is the great motive behind every action, every ambition that we take behind all the work and all the striving and all the effort. I mean, why do we do what we do? Because we want happiness. We want satisfaction and we want it to last. But the tragedy of it is this. Although until we give ourselves to find that, what Jesus offers, we're never going to find real satisfaction. 
Because we don't understand when Jesus is more than enough, we can be satisfied. And now it seems like it's an outside the Christian faith, outside of Christianity. You know, if I'm a Christian, you know, of course Jesus is more than enough. But it, tragically, it happens inside the church as well. And I, I would talk to those of you who are faithful followers of Jesus. Take a real assessment. Are you satisfied? Because I see that there are large numbers of people inside the church who seem to spend their whole life seeking something which they can never find. How do I see it? They, they go from meeting to meeting service to service, program to program, and sometimes church to church. They hope that they will find an experience that will fill them with joy and life and satisfaction. Listen, we are not meant to hunger and thirst for experiences. We are meant to hunger and thirst what the Bible calls righteousness. And there's a promise there. If you really are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, you will be filled. You will be satisfied. Jesus will be more than enough. And how do we do this? Well, we need to understand righteousness. I know that's a theological word. I'm sure some of us saying don't even realize what it means. But righteousness, the best, most simple way I can describe it is a term that we want to be in a right standing before God. That when God looks at us, he sees us and he's proud of us and he wants to be with us. If we hunger and thirst after that, we will be filled. But how do we obtain that right standing before God? It's simple. We obtain a right standing with God, righteousness, and it only happens through Jesus. And Jesus knew this when he was here on earth. We get the real life accounts, four different accounts of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And over and over and over again, Jesus realizes if these people want right standing, a good relationship with God, they've got to come through me, through Jesus. And so there would be times in his ministry where he would make this very, very matter of fact. And we're going to talk about one of those times today because people around Jesus, not just us thousands of years later, people around Jesus wanted that satisfaction. Jesus, for them, he wanted to be more than enough for them. So there's a moment in Jesus' ministry, and we're going to talk about that moment today where he made an I am statement, declaring he was God and and how he was going to live that out. So if you have your Bibles or if you're following along in the U version notes, we're going to camp out in John chapter 6 today. The Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John chapter 6. Jesus says this in verse 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Do you remember The beatitude at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he said, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. Now he's saying, I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me, they won't be hungry, they won't be thirsty. Now this I am statement, and Jesus would make many of these statements, this cuts to the heart of these issues that we feel. See, what Jesus is doing is he's having a conversation with a crowd of people who are looking for the meaning of life. They want to be satisfied. They want a meaningful life. They want to define life. They want to make sure that they are following what God has for them. And they believe that they have found it in this guy who teaches well and he does great miracles. They think they found it in Jesus. And they did find it, but not the way that they think. So life as they think, this is how they think it is through Jesus. This young teacher from Nazareth, Jesus, he begins teaching around the ancient world with authority like something they've never heard before. And through his teachings and his miracles, people are starting to see his divine power. I mean, the crowd that's following Jesus here, it's a very large crowd. But maybe some of these people have seen or heard about amazing things from this young teacher named Jesus. Maybe some of them were guests at that wedding in Cana where Jesus turned water into wine. Maybe some of them lived in the town of Samaria when he heard what he had done for the woman at the well. Maybe some of them watched a man who climbed into the pool at Bethesda and he comes out healed. Maybe some of them were in the crowd when Jesus healed a government official's son and Jesus wasn't even in the same room as that sick boy. I mean, these are the kinds of people that are following Jesus. You do these kinds of things. You teach the way Jesus is teaching. You're going to draw a crowd. And each time Jesus healed somebody or taught with a new authority, a large crowd of people would begin to follow him around. And they would probably start to proclaim things like this. There is life found in this guy. We have found life. We have found satisfaction. We have found what we're looking for, and it's in this guy. And then right before Jesus makes this statement, I am the bread of life, you know what Jesus did? Probably one of his greatest miracles. 
He feeds a massive crowd of 5,000 men and their families. And the people, it tells us in the Bible, the people literally start to freak out. They start a small riot. They're so excited. And Jesus actually needs to slip away from the crowd because he knows that they're actually planning to kind of like take him by force and make him the next king of Israel. That's what they wanted. They believe that they have found their king to take over Rome and to give them their satisfaction. But there was a shift. Jesus sensed this and he says, "Uh uh-uh. He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Not the political speech that they were looking for. I mean, what, what happened? Jesus, what he's doing is he looks at a people who are searching for life, searching for satisfaction. He offers them a definition for life that they just don't want to accept. See, they're coming to Jesus looking for life and significance and satisfaction. And Jesus responds to that search and actually exposes the emptiness in their life and what they're searching for. See, with this one statement, this I am the bread of life, he exposes those unfulfilled needs in their life, their, their misdirection, misdirected motivation, and even their shifting allegiances. I want you to see what happens before Jesus makes this statement. First of all, Jesus kind of exposes the need that you and I have and the need that this crowd has. Listen to what he says in 25 and 26. This is what happens when they find him on the other side of the lake. Now, Jesus had just healed. uh, He had just fed 5,000 people. He just walked on water. So he's on the other side of the lake. This crowd, they come to him and they say, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. See, there's an event that just happened that everyone's referring to in this moment. This event goes all the way back to the book of Exodus, to their heritage as the people of God. It goes back to when God delivered his people from Egypt. You know, we read in Exodus chapter 15 that they sing a beautiful song. They they, they declare that God is our deliverer. God is strong. God prevailed over Pharaoh and the army. And then in the very next chapter, almost overnight, they say, God has left us. We don't have any food. Where are you, God? And then God miraculously sends bread from heaven for them every single day. And that that moment would be significant for the people of God. In fact, when they would start to prophesy about the Messiah, when they would make predictions as to when the Son of God would come, they would say that there would something would be coming with him. It would be bread. It would be manna from heaven. Now remember, what did Jesus do the day before this event? Before he says, I'm the bread of life, he just fed 5,000 people with what? He multiplied loaves of bread. So it clicks in their head. They're all looking at each other and they're proclaiming, okay, this is the sign that accompanies the coming of the Messiah. But they're not proclaiming that he provided the bread and that would signify that he's the Savior. I mean, in this moment, do you catch what Jesus is asking them? He says, you guys are only here, not because of miraculous signs, but because you ate yesterday. He exposes the motives of their heart because what they're really saying is you fed us yesterday. Do you have any more bread? They wanted something temporary. He exposes their motivation. Listen to what he says in verses 26 and 27. He says, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. He exposes this need of their heart, their motivation, what what they really need. See, what he's saying is your perceived need is that you need food right now. That's not your actual need. You, You want this bread to physically feed you like it did in the Old Testament. But that's not your actual need. Jesus is actually using a different word than we would expect him to use. It's this word, life. And there's different definitions for it in the original language that Jesus spoke it in. Now, the definition of life could be two ways. It could be bios, which is the physical and material life. But Jesus uses a different word. It's the Greek word zoe. And he's talking about a life that transcends, a life that's eternal. So listen to verse 27 in that light. Jesus says, do not work for food that spoils but for food that endures to zoe life, not a bios life, zoe, eternal, not physical. Here's what Jesus 
is exposing. He's showing their need. He's showing your need and my need. Our, our strive for satisfaction, our strive for Jesus to be more than enough. Here's what Jesus is saying. You have a hunger that transcends your physical hunger. You have a thirst that transcends your just physical temporary thirst. You have a need that you can't fill, but you will work so hard to fill it. Jesus is really saying you have a zoe kind of need that you've been trying to fill with a bios kind of solution. You have an eternal need that you've been trying to fill with a temporary solution. Why do we do this? Because we want satisfaction. So what do we do? Sometimes we minimize our problem and we look to a solution that we can manage. We need life. We have a problem. And so what we do is we try to find an eternal Zoe definition of life and a bios temporary solution. What do we, where do we run? We run to money. We run to relationships. We run to our success, to our career, to our items, to our experience. We need a Zoe solution for a Zoe kind of need. And so Jesus is saying, I'm here. I'm not just here to feed you today. I'm here to feed you forever. And they still don't understand. So Jesus, again, has to not just expose their need, but he's exposing their motivation. So they st things start to click a little bit. So watch what happens in verses 30 and 31. So the crowd asks him, well, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna and the bread in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So they're saying, okay, so what you're saying is, is you want to give us this eternal kind of bread. Like what sign are you going to do as if breaking bread and feeding 5,000 people wasn't enough? They said, we, we need more. What are, what are you going to do? Well, we want this bread from heaven. So listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And listen to how the crowd responds. They say, sir, from now on, give us this bread. They're still thinking about physical bread. They kind of say, you know what? We want manna 2.0. This must be better. You're bringing bread down from heaven. We'll never have to be hungry again. If we follow you around, we don't have to worry about ever, ever needing anything again. That satisfaction. I don't have to have any worry, no bills, no nothing. But Jesus exposes it again, and he tells them in a, in a roundabout way multiple times. He says, you guys aren't here for me. You are here because of the benefits that you get from me, not because of the relationship that you get with me. So Jesus is saying, you're not here to see another miraculous sign. You're here because I fed you yesterday, and you want me to feed you now. And I want you to see that Jesus exposes our motivation too. If we're only in this for the benefits of Christianity, then what we do is we come to church, we give our money, we do religious things, but we never partake of the bread of life. Because we're going to be motivated by self-righteousness or emotions. Our friends and our family will be motivated, motivated by this church culture and we'll never partake of the bread of life because we missed it. And there's a motivation there. If we're in this for the benefits and not for Jesus, there's going to be a big difference between the public appearance of our relationship with God and the private reality of that relationship. We're only in it for the benefits. Hey, here's what it looks like. We, we talk about God, but we don't talk to him. We talk about God's word, but we don't read God's word. We worry about what the crowd says about us in public more than we hang on to what God says to us in the quiet moments of our hearts. Jesus is exposing their motivation. He's exposing their need. He's saying, you don't want just me. Like, I, I, I am the bread of life. I, I'm, I'm what you need. You, you just want what I can give you. So my question for all of us is, why, why would we even be in a relationship with God anyway? Is it to get something out of it? Because listen, God has already given us more than enough. He sent his son to die in our place to forgive us of our sins so that we could have a right relationship, righteousness with God. Here, here's the truth, truth. If Jesus doesn't do one more thing for us, we still owe him everything. Even in that truth, Jesus still wants to be the bread of life for you and for me. So he's exposing their need. It's not a physical need right now kind of need. It's an eternal one. He exposes their motivation. He's saying, you, you don't want just me. You want what I can do for you. And it all comes to a head 
when he even exposes their allegiance to him. Remember in verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. I mean, the rest of this chapter, this beautiful chapter, is Jesus unpacking this changing statement. It's powerful. But this is also where everything kind of falls apart, and you wouldn't expect it to happen that way. But that's the definition of life, that they and us, we just can't accept. Well, I mean, what Jesus really says is you want satisfaction. He says, I've not come to just bring you bread and the things that you want. I have come to be the bread. I have not come in to improve your life. I have come to be your life. And tragically, this is where the crowd and sometimes you and I, they reject his definition of life. You know what he says? He says, I am the bread of life. I'm not the bread of temporary bios physical kind of life he says i'm the bread of life i'm the bread of zoe eternal life i am the means and i am the meaning of life the means by which we live and the meaning of what life is all about that's what jesus is saying you want satisfaction you come to me because it's not temporary and it won't go away and it won't fade it lasts forever i mean think about the next level kind of invitation it's as if jesus is saying to all of us however close or far you feel from god he says Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty because he is the bread of life. What's Jesus saying? He says, I am all that you need. I'm the thing that you're looking for. To have me and nothing else is to have everything. Therefore, turn away from whatever it is that you're currently looking for to try to find Zoe life. I'm it. And sadly, I told you, it, it starts to kind of fall apart. Later in verse 60 and verse 66, it tells us this. On hearing it, many disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Verse 66, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. I mean, what in the world happened? Jesus just gave the definition of life. If you want satisfaction, if you want to me to be more than enough for you so that you don't feel empty anymore, I'm it. Follow me. As soon as Jesus demands any type of allegiance from them, as soon as he declares that he is the bread of life, he is what they need, not what they've gone to before, but he is what they need. As soon as he draws that line in the sand, they walk away. They walk away. Now, there will be other moments, and there have been moments in Jesus' ministry where people walked away. But why is this important? Why right here is this important? Because when this conversation happens, Bible scholars will tell us that Jesus is already entering the third year of his public ministry. So some of those very people who are walking away have been with Jesus for at least two years. They've seen him perform miracles. They've walked with him. They've heard private teachings and public teachings, and now... They missed it. Why? Because they wanted Jesus to be their meal ticket. They wanted Jesus to be their politician to change the world. They wanted Jesus to be an entertainer. They wanted Jesus to be their personal healer. They wanted Jesus to conform to their image and their expectations. They were around him all the time. They were impassioned by him. They were impressed by him. Despite all of this, they missed him. And Jesus responds. He says, listen, I am the bread of life. Turn from whatever you find in life right now and come to me. I can be your satisfaction. See, I think the fear is for us today, now, is that we hold bread in our hands. And we look at the bread, the things that satisfy us, the things that probably are temporary, but they feel good now. We look at that bread, and then we look at Jesus. And the bread that he offers. And what we do a lot of times is we close our hands around our bread. And it's as if we say to Jesus, just like these people, Jesus, I have all the life that I need right here. I have all I need in my job, my relationship, my dreams, my plans, even my addiction or my sin. I have everything. If you're telling me, Jesus, that in order to get to you, I have to give up my bread, this bread, I don't know if I can do it. I'll, I'll walk away. Because that's not the life that I'm interested in. I want satisfaction, just not your definition and expectation. 
of satisfaction. What I want you to understand is that Jesus is the only bread that will break for you. That's why we celebrate communion. That's why we break bread together. All of the other bread that you hold on to, those things that you want, they're going to break you. Jesus breaks himself for you so you can have a relationship with God. It's as if Jesus knows that we want life to be more than enough with him. And it's as if he walks up to us, he finds us that we're starving to death. And we try to fill our stomach with substitutes. But we're still hungry. We're still thirsty. And Jesus still declares, I am the bread of life. And he says it when we need it the most. And we have a choice to make. If we want satisfaction, will we turn to the bread of life? Listen to how this encounter ends. All the way at the end, at verse 66 through 69, Jesus says this. From, many, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Listen to what Jesus says. He turns to his 12 disciples, probably heartbroken. And he says, you do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the 12, and Simon Peter spoke up. And he answered, he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words, listen, of Zoe life. We believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. When everybody else left, they realized he is it. We trust him. We follow him. He has the eternal things that we long for, not just the physical things, but the eternal things. So how will you respond today? How, how, where, where else are we going to go? Because a lot of us have a choice to make. We can be part of the crowd that was there. And we can continually ask God for satisfaction and fulfillment in life. And, and we could still make our life about our job or our kids or perfecting our body or, or living out our dreams or going to our hobbies and experiences. And we can make our lives about anything else. And we end up just as empty as when we first started pursuing those things. And we'll never stop the cycle of looking for satisfaction in life, even when Jesus is standing right in front of us. So we can be like that crowd that hears this truth and they say, that's too hard. And that's not the satisfaction I was hoping for. Or we could be like the 12. Those men who realized everybody else has left, but we know something. They saw that Jesus was the bread of life, not just the physical bread, but the eternal bread. And that they could come to him and they would never thirst or hunger again. We, we can put down our bread and we can take the invitation of Jesus and watch our lives change. You want satisfaction in life? Go to Jesus, because he's more than enough. Because I'll remind you that you have a hunger that transcends just your physical hunger, and nothing's going to satisfy it. You have a thirst that transcends just your physical thirst, and nothing is going to satisfy it. You have a need that you can't fill. You have what the Bible calls a Zoe need that you've been trying to fill with a bios temporary solution. But Jesus says, I have a Zoe solution, an eternal solution for your Zoe need. I have an eternal solution for that eternal need in your heart. And Jesus says, I'm it. I'm the bread of life. So here's how I want to end today. When we talk about Jesus being more than enough, friends, I love you enough to tell you this hard truth. There is no life outside of Jesus. There's not multiple ways to find fulfillment and satisfaction in life. It's just not true. There's no life outside of Jesus, and we've got to come to that place today. No matter what circumstances you might be going through, and maybe you're having trouble even believing about Jesus, but I'm here to tell you the truth. We have to have that as the foundation and the confession of our hearts. You want Jesus to be more than enough. You want satisfaction in life. You come to him. You get to the point where you say, you know what, Jesus, where else would I go? A life is all about you, Jesus. You are the bread of life. Remember, when Jesus is more than enough, we can live our lives satisfied. Jesus says this in the Beatitudes, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. How enriched you are when you crave righteousness, for you will be satisfied. Do you want satisfaction today? Then let Jesus be more than enough. To those of you who already follow Jesus, who are part of the church, my challenge to you is this. Look around your life 
and where you're trying to find satisfaction. You may believe and declare and say amen that Jesus is more than enough. But are you filling that eternal hole with temporary things and you feel weary and frustrated? Put down your bread and grab the bread of life again. But to those of you who don't follow Jesus, I don't want to let you leave today's broadcast without an invitation to choose to follow him. I know you might not have all the answers to your questions, but I bet deep down you can do an assessment of your heart and say, you know what, I've been, my whole life I've been trying to fill that eternal hole, been trying to be satisfied. I can't find it in relationships, money, my job, my career, my kids, my family. I mean, those things are good and pleasing, and, and God wants those for us, but they're not going to fill that what Bible calls that Zoe eternal need. You've been searching and searching and searching and searching and you're weary and frustrated and you want something that just feels like it's more than enough. You want satisfaction in life. To you, I would say, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for Jesus because you will be satisfied. And I want to give you that opportunity today. I'm not going to make you do anything crazy. I'm just going to pray with you and ask you to pray with me. Because today, this is you are simply inviting Jesus to be part of your life. To make him number one, to say, you know what, I, my bread isn't working anymore. I, I need the bread of life. That's all you're doing. And so I want to lead you in a prayer. And I want you to pray this with me. I want you to believe it in your heart. And the Bible says that you become part of the family of God and you will begin to see. And I pray instantaneously you begin to see that that eternal satisfaction you're longing for, it's going to start to be filled with Jesus. So would you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus so that I can have a right relationship with him. Thank you that you forgive my sins, and I admit that I've made some mistakes. I admit that I've been trying to fill this hole with temporary things, and I want to fill it with eternal things. I want to fill that hole with Jesus. I know I don't have all the answers to my questions. I know that I need to trust you and have faith in you, but today I want to start laying down my bread, and I want to grab the bread of life. I want to be able to declare emphatically that you are more than enough for me and that I am satisfied. I invite you to be part of my life. I confess that you are the Son of God, and from this day forward, I want to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, we would love to connect with you. There's going to be a way for you to connect with us at the end of our broadcast today. Take down an information. We'd love to pray with you and meet you. Uh, but we're so glad that you've joined us today. We ask you to come back next week for week two of More Than Enough when we'll talk about following Jesus and he's more than enough. Everything is supplied for us. So we're excited for you to join us. You can always find out more information about our church or listen to past message series like this uh, by visiting our website, New City de.org. You'll find information about our church, what we believe. You even see some information about things upcoming for the Christmas season that you can be a part of. But also, if you prayed that prayer and you know what, you, you need to be here and you want to meet people physically and, and you're ready to come to an in-person service, we have in-person worship every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. right here at our church. We have an adult service. We have a service for your kids, New City Kids, where there's live worship, there's preaching. You get to meet other people just like this, but we work hard to make that environment safe for you. And we'd love to see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our in-person worship services. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're praying for you, and we hope to see you next week as we talk about Jesus being more than enough. God bless you, and have a great day.